everyone, welcome back to PC Perspective. We have another video here for you that we're going to give you a quick overview. I say overview because we have our full posted uh, review at PCPer.com already, but I want to give you a quick overview of the new ASUS ROG Mars 760 card, the ROG Republic of Gamers. And Mars is indicative of their kind of flagship NVIDIA-based graphics card. So what you have here is the Mars 760. And what you might notice if you're a frequenter of PC Perspective or you really, really enjoy high-end video cards is that uh, this is a little bit smaller than some of the Mars cards of the past, particularly the most recent one, the Mars 2, that was enormous. So as it would indicate, the Mars 760 is a dual GTX 760 graphics card on a single PCB. Um, we're looking at two fans, two separate heat sinks, one for each GPU. Uh, we're we have two 8-pin power connectors for this. This Mars logo obviously lights up, uh, as you would expect. On the back, you see some of the power delivery. And this, I actually really like it when they have these kind of back plates on the rear of these cards. It both adds some stability and some strength to the, to the PCB itself when the heat sinks can kind of get kind of heavy. Um, and it also, I just think it looks nice because if you have a window in your case, this is what's actually going to be showing, uh, which is a plus. If you look at the output configuration, you have three DVI outputs and one mini display port, uh, which is interesting. I, I think this is probably the best configuration considering, you know, most users are going to be, you know, the most, most users are still going to have DVI monitors, uh, display ports still there, so you can support stuff like G-Sync, or you can support uh, 4K monitors if you want to uh, do that too. And notice that there is an SLI connection here. So this has two GTX 760s, and you have the capability to install a second one of these if you want to buy two ASUS, Mars G, or ASUS ROG Mars 760 cards. You can actually get four GTX 760 GPUs up and running at the same time. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for the card design. It's, it's a well-built card. Performance-wise, you're looking at surprisingly good single-card performance. This actually, uh, I would consider it faster than uh, the GeForce GTX 780 Ti, which is uh, $699 in retail price. Um, it's faster than the 780, obviously. It's also faster than the Radeon R9, <clears throat> excuse me, R9 290X. The, you know, complexity with that is that it's two GPUs. So it has to use SLI to get to that performance level. All those other cards I mentioned are single GPU cards where it's much easier for you to get the full performance out of uh, your graphics card. Um, in our testing, in our benchmarking, we showed that in most cases that wasn't really an issue. NVIDIA has been very good with SLI. They don't have uh, some of those scaling issues with one display or three displays. And uh, I, I think... I'm, I'm fairly confident in NVIDIA's capability to maintain multi-GPU scaling uh, going forward. So I don't have any issues with the GTX 760 really in that regard. But I have always said, and I still believe, that all things being equal, if you can get the same or similar performance out of a single GPU solution, uh, I would do that. Pricing-wise, you'll be able to pick this up very soon for uh, an MSRP of $630, which again puts it in that super high-end enthusiast class of graphics cards. The 780 Ti is going to be $700. The GTX 780 is $500. And then the Radeon R9 290X is $550. So if you compare it to, say, the GTX 780, you're talking about $130 markup, $130 higher price. You definitely get better performance than it. Uh, but is it worth it? Do you think maybe saving that $130 would be a better idea considering you're getting single GPU, um, you know, capability? And if you want to expand that later, you can do that as well. The R9 290X is $80 less than this card and then $70 more for the 780 Ti. I think all these cards are really meant for different people. This has 4 gigs of memory on it and it runs at a clock speeds, a uh, base clock of 1,006 megahertz. So it's actually a fairly fast clock speed, but that two gigs of frame buffer, two gigs of memory is kind of the limiting factor um, because it's only two, it's four gigs total, but it's two per GPU. So when you're running at say, you know, 4K resolutions, that can be a bottleneck. And we saw performance differences between it and the 780 Ti uh, at 4K that we didn't see at 25 by 14. I think. The, the best target for a card like this is a, is a user that's gaming on a single panel 
2560 by 1440 or 2560 by 1600. Uh, and you know, you don't really have uh, an itch to go up to one of those 2500 or $3,500 4K monitors quite yet. It's also uh, the first Mars card that's not limited edition. Uh, it's not, you know, the last one was $1,200, I think, when it was released. So, you know, this is the kind of a Mars card that they've built for the masses. Uh, we'll be curious to see if uh, Asus continues down that realm of creating these kind of custom build, uh, very unique designs. Nobody else has a dual GTX 760 card uh, that I'm aware of. So that is the Mars uh, Asus ROG Mars 760. Like I said, make sure you check out the full review at PCPer.com where it's got all the benchmarks and photos and comparisons uh, that you may need in addition to this video. Thanks for watching.